Bibles, would you turn to the Gospel of Luke chapter 2, Luke chapter 2 beginning at verse 1 and when you're there say amen, Luke chapter 2 and if you don't have your Bibles we got it up on the screen, Luke chapter 2 beginning at verse 1 and it came to pass in those days that there went out a decree from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed, everybody say taxed and this taxing was first made by Serenius the governor of Syria and all went to be taxed, every one to his own city. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, say Galilee, because I, that's going to come in later, hopefully, out of the city of Nazareth into Judea, unto the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espouse wife, being great with child. That means she was real pregnant, y'all. And so it was that while they were there, that the days accomplished that she should be delivered. And she brought forth her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding over the field, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Everybody say night. Now I want you to just look at it up on the screen. Psalms 137 Verse 4, and I'll ask you to leave that verse up the rest of the service. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? I want to preach a little while this morning from the subject of songs in a strange place. Songs in a strange place. If you go to a concert, you expect to hear a song. If you go to a gospel concert, what do you expect to hear? You expect to hear singing. If you come to a Pentecostal church or a vibrant church before the preacher gets up to preach, you expect to hear somebody singing. Am I right about it? And there's certain atmospheres where you expect singing. and you, There's something powerful about a song. Chelsea, what key was that last song in? The, the key of G. The key of G. Now, no matter how much I would have liked to have been able to hear that by ear and determine what key they were in, your pastor did not know. So imagine if I would have got real excited and just grabbed one of my harmonicas and got up here and tried to jam out wrong with, with them, but they're in the key of G, and I get up here in the key of E flat, I'm going to mess up everything. The song would be going good until I got up in the wrong key. And because I'm not in the same key that they're in, it's going to mess up what they're saying. See, the reason some of you have been struggling in your faith is you were singing the right song. But there were people around you that are in the wrong key. They're in the key of negativity, in the key of doubt, in the key of religion, in the key of fear. There are these two farmers. There, there was these two farmers, two neighbors their property adjoined. And one farmer, he was very positive. Man, anything you threw at him, he was positive about it. Gave God praise. He was a great Christian. Always had a great uh, attitude, Dr. Randy. Always happy. And so with the other neighbor, not so much. The other neighbor was like some of your family members. The other neighbor was always negative. Instead of seeing the good in anything, he saw the bad in everything. So when the rain would come, the positive farmer would say, God, I praise you for the rain that's going to feed our crops. I praise you uh, for this rain that you've given us. And the negative farmer would walk up and say, yeah, but if it don't quit this mess, it's going to wash us out and we ain't going to have no crop. Next day, the sun would come up. Positive farmer would get up and say, God, I praise you for the nutrients and the sunshine and how you're causing our crops to grow with it. Negative farmer would hear him and say, yeah, but if his son don't lay off, it's going to scorch our crops and we ain't going to have nothing. But they were still good friends. And one day they decided to go fishing they were go, or go hunting. They were going bird hunting off a boat. And he got him a brand new bird dog, the positive, the positive farmer did. And the negative farmer's in the boat with him. And they'd just been hunting a little while, Bobby. And all of a sudden, a bird flies up in the air, positive hunter pops it. 
the bird flies, falls down on the ground. He said, now watch this. And he releases his brand new bird dog. That bird dog took off out of that boat and he didn't walk on the water. He didn't swim. He ran on the water. He ran on the water all the way to the bird, picked it up, and ran all the way back to the boat. Positive farmer was so happy. He looked at the negative farmer. He said, what would you think about that? Negative farmer said, oh, no, and you'd get a dog that didn't have enough sense to swim. And that's the way some people are in life. That no matter what good is going on, they, they, I, I'm just trying to tell somebody, day after Christmas, you got more to praise him for than you've got to complain about. In fact, I don't want to preach another word until we give him a praise that he's worthy of. If he's been good to you, praise him. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. See, sometimes the song gets messed up because you get people around you that's in the wrong key. They're in the key of negativity. You in the key of C and they in the key of oh me. You know, you walk into the song and you're ready to give God a praise and they walk into the room and they're ready to just put a fire hose on everything. God told me to tell you that in this season, many of you have been singing songs in strange places because it ain't weird for me to sing in here. But in this last season that we've all come through, let's be honest, this last few, uh, two years, we've all been in some strange places. Uh, the Bible said it this way, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you, as though some strange thing has happened unto you. But I think we would all agree, we've seen stuff happen this last two years that we couldn't have imagined five years ago. We have felt it as a church, we have felt it as a nation, and we have felt it as individuals. Did you know that anxiety in America and across the globe is at an all-time high? Because we're in a strange land. People fight with each other now over things that they would have never fought with each other about 10 years ago. Before you make a post on social media now, you got to read it to yourself 10 times to make sure that somebody ain't going to take it the wrong way. You put it out there and they do it anyway. It's a strange time that we live in. Fathers separated from sons. Mothers separated from daughters. It would be very strange if God hadn't told us times like this would come and the Bible told us think it not strange we failed as the church Sean we failed as the church Jeremy to tell this generation that there is, there is a devil you got to fight sometimes it's not strange I'm going to help somebody if I don't help everybody I'm going to help somebody it's not strange to battle with anxiety it's not strange to battle with fear. It's not strange to have the darkness come against you and make you think you're losing your mind. That ain't strange. But I tell you how to beat that thing is don't lose your soul when things get weird. Every powerful movement always had a song. And God told me to tell somebody, don't lose your song for anything. We were at Papa's night before last. Uh, Christmas Eve. Papa, 90 years old, he's over the COVID, but he's not over the effects of, of living for 90 years, of battling cancer, of uh, having been run over by a truck, literally, trampled by cattle, uh, having two artificial hips, 90 years, y'all. And he laid there, and we were all just talking, and we brought him in there in his recliner, and he was laying there asleep, and we thought everything was good. And then all of a sudden, Papa Troy started doing something I've never heard him do before. Because now, Papa has been getting a little hateful here lately. I've heard him do that a lot. Dad and Mike's like, will you go pray for Papa Troy and make sure that he's right with the Lord? He's been kind of hateful. But God gave us a sign on Christmas Eve. While all the family was just trying to enjoy the festivities, out of that 90-year-old little broken body, Papa started saying, amazing grace. And that's how he was saying it. How sweet the sound. And he was crying. That saved a wretch. And that's how it sounded. Like me. Bowed over in pain. I once was lost. But now I'm found, was blind, but now I see tears. 
That's a song in a strange place right there. And that was God letting the whole family know, I got a hold of your daddy. I kept him through his 30s, his 40s, his 50s, and I ain't about to leave him at 90. I need you to give God a praise. If you've ever had to sing in a strange, strange place. Oh, it's easy for me to sing on the mountain when things are going good and the sun's shining and the birds are chirping and the body feels right and Carlene's being sweet to me. But when I accidentally opened the Christmas present three days early, accidentally on purpose, when I, I you know, when, when the kids are banging into each other's cars and when things are a little bit crazy, you know, you don't feel so much like singing. I found out that when you feel like singing the least is usually when you need to sing the most. See, we get it backwards. We think, well, if I feel good, I'm going to sing good. But I grew up in the old church. Praise the Lord, it'll make you feel better. I know it will. Praise the Lord, it'll make you. I dare you to give God a praise right now. If you didn't want to get out of bed, if you fought some devils this week, if you've cried some tears this year, I dare you to sing God's praise in a strange place. Singing when you don't feel like it. It's easy to sing when things are going good. But Bubba there on the front row with tears streaming down his face, giving God a praise when his daddy's struggling. Clifford and Cynthia being in church when Gabriel's going through what he's going through. Sometimes we have to sing in a strange land. The children of Israel said, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Some of y'all been saying stuff like that. You may not have framed it like that, but you've been saying, God, how can I praise you with this going on in my life? How can I praise you with this going on in my mind? How, how can I praise you with these struggles in my family? The Babylon had grabbed Israel, led them captive, and put them by the rivers of Babylon, which speak of confusion. Confusion is always of the enemy. Hear this if you don't get nothing else until the next thing I say. Confusion is always of the enemy. The word of the Lord said God is not the author of confusion. But did you know the only thing God will confuse according to his word is when you praise God, he said, I will confuse your enemy, the enemy that's been trying to confuse you. God said, if you'll praise me, I'll get them so confused, they don't even know how to sue you. I, if you praise me, I'll confuse the enemy so much, he loses his ability to prosecute. That's somebody's word right there. A strange land. They, they were brought by the rivers of Babylon. They said, Dad, we wept. And those that captured them said, Sing me Amazing Grace right now. Sing me one of those Chelsea songs right now. Sing like Cheryl now. It's easy for Cheryl and Chelsea and Jasmine to sing up on stage. Well, it ain't always easy. Singing in front of people is tough, believe it or not. But it's a lot easier than some of the broken places they've been in life. It was there the enemy came and tried to steal their song. It was there in the strangeness. We celebrate Christmas and we talk about all the joyful, joyful, all the lights, all the festivities. Look, there's lights here, lights there, Christmas tree there, lights everywhere. But in the story when it was really taking place, there wasn't no lights. Junior, it was dark, darkness. I promised Carlina wouldn't do it. So I'm not going to do that thing out of Batman where Bane said, you adopted the darkness. I was born there. Darkness everywhere. See, I promised you I wouldn't do it. Darkness everywhere. And in the darkness, can you imagine how Mary felt because people were calling her tramp. People were calling her harlot. She was misunderstood. Now, I want you, for those of you that miss Wednesday night, I want you to put yourself in their predicament. Imagine, and Carlene, I thank God you didn't do this, but imagine 25 years ago if Carlene would have come up to me and said, hey, Bugs, and I'd have been like, hey, Shell. And she would have said, I'm pregnant. And, you know, we, we haven't been knowing each other biblically, yo. I would have been like, What? And then she would have had the audacity to say, but don't get mad, Bugs. It's from the Holy Ghost. I would have myself a situation right there. 
I mean, that dog don't hunt on any level. And that's the exact same situation in this darkness. There's a young girl that's carrying something from God that everybody around her doubts. Don't freak out when people doubt what God put in you. That's a whole part of it. I've had them doubt me for 25 years. I kept on preaching. You had them doubt you every time you served God. Keep on serving him. They can call you a hypocrite. They can call you fake. Praise him anyhow if you've ever been doubted by people I need you to praise him now see it ain't so strange when you read the story in context you thought you was the only one that had ever had people doubt your sincerity to the Lord have you ever had people see you at a bad moment in life and say well he ain't really saved look at what he did I'm going to go out on a limb here and just hypothetically speak and imagine Susie Q lost her temper would never happen in real life. And somebody around her judged her by that moment and began to doubt that Christ was really in her. Ain't it just like people to see one bad season in your life and say, that's all you are. That's all you'll ever be. And we begin to let the voices of people, the voices of our own conscience, the voice of what society has taught us to think, try to drown out the voice of God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Because the Bible said the Holy Ghost is my comforter, my helper, my paraclete. On my, in my ear is the voice of the Father. The Bible says he will bring all things to my remembrance, which means if I'm fighting a battle in my mind, the Holy Ghost will remind me of scriptures that will give me peace. He will remind me of sermons that pulled me through a hard time. He will remind me of somebody's testimony that helped me through a tough situation. But just as surely as there's a voice of the Holy Ghost in one of my ears, there's other voices in the other ears. And sometimes we let out their voices drown out his voice. Listen, the presence of God's voice does not eliminate their voices. It just eliminates the effect of their voices if you choose to put God's voice above it. And what we failed to do as believers is we failed to esteem the word of the Lord. In fact, in many churches in this hour that you and I live in, they don't even read out of the book because somebody might think it's old-fashioned. Certain parts they try to take out of it because they might, it might offend somebody. My papa said, if one part don't work, don't none of it work. You take it all or nothing at all. And I just, that's the way I grew up. It's an all or nothing kind of deal. I still believe that the word of God is able to calm a troubled heart, to heal a broken marriage, to deliver a drug addict to put somebody back together if you believe there's power 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 in the word I need you to give him a praise right now the enemy fights this word and tries to amplify the word of his of his voice and the voice of those that don't believe in you but Mary held on to the word of the angel and I've said it many times and I'll say it again act like you've never heard it but when the angel told her her assignment, the Bible never said she feared what she saw. It said she was troubled at what she heard. If a 12-foot angel pops up on this stage with me right now, I'm calling Veronica and I'm saying, you're going to have to talk me through this. I saw something that's messing with me right now. She didn't worry about what she saw. She worried about what she heard because she knew when you were carrying the word of the Lord, there were consequences. You were going to be misunderstood. See, some of you young people I see like Parker and these young people, Sierra and Logan, Jake and Grace and all these young the, the, the people in your age group, they would look at you and they would say, why are you in church on the day after Christmas? Shouldn't you be hungover? Shouldn't you? They don't understand that you felt something they ain't felt, that you know you need God and God's been there for you and you didn't feel like coming, but you came anyhow. If you're thankful, that there's still young people that come to the house of God I want you to give them a hand clap and give God a praise for keeping them Mary and Joseph the, the Bible says the whole world a decree was sent out that the whole world should be taxed why? because there was a prophecy in the Old Testament I feel the Holy Ghost that the Messiah would be born in Bethlehem, Judah. House of bread, house of praise. See, when God puts something in you, it can't just be birthed any old place. 
See, some of you, the problem ain't what's in you. It's what's around you. You, you pack in the right package, you're just in the wrong address. And because one woman was out of place, the whole world got taxed. I feel my help coming. Could it be that COVID-19, political upheaval, racial tensions, and all these things emerged simultaneously? Could it be that maybe the woman, the church, was out of place? That we had got so comfortable just singing the songs. Just going through the motions. But we had failed to give a dark generation the light of Jesus. We had failed to preach the gospel in the power of the Holy Ghost. We had failed to pray prayers like, not my will, but thy will be done. And could it be that God used all these taxings to get the church back into place to where we quit walking around with our head up, but we got right back down on our knees and said, God, if you don't do it, it can't get done. There's a church that's emerging that's full of power and full of glory I feel you ought to give God a praise right now hell gets nervous on the day after Christmas when it starts dropping bombs like this if it didn't do anything to anybody else it woke this preacher up John he woke me up to do it it wasn't about cute little sermons polished little prayers but there were people that were tormented in their mind and the church busy playing games church busy saying well they might, they might misunderstand me if I tell them they need to be saved or saved folk might misunderstand me if I tell them they need to be baptized in the Holy Ghost when it was Paul in Acts 19 that asked believers he said have you received the Holy Ghost after you believed when you get saved you're sealed but that's not the same thing as the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And now we have churches that are Pentecostal in name, but there is no power fulfilling what Paul feared, saying there will be a church that has a form of godliness that denies the power thereof. We want to act godly, but we don't want the power to show up. Can I tell you what's going to change this generation? When the power of God is released upon people, when we see broken bodies get healed, when we see tormented minds put back together, when we see people that were manic depressed actually smiling and in their right mind. That's what will change things. That's what will cause things to be turned upside down. But one little woman out of place and God had to tax the whole world. And The Bible said to travel by night. We talk a lot about Mary, but I tried to give Joseph his props Wednesday night because Joseph was just as important to the story as Mary. Because imagine, and just for example, I'm not putting us on like we're Mary and Joseph, even though we did play Mary and Joseph when Carlene got pregnant with Grayson. We were playing that in a play, and Carlene thought she had stage fright and was throwing up. And I was like, don't be nervous, baby. We're going to nail this. I was like acting like Vince Vaughn. Y'all ever seen Four Christmases? Remember when they had to play baby, he had to play Joseph and she had to play Mary? I was like, we're going to nail this part right here. And Carlene was backstage like gagging. I was like, baby, don't. I didn't know, but she was, she was pregnant. She was pregnant. Now, so imagine if in reality, you know, say she was really Mary and I was really Joseph, and she came to me and told me that. Nobody ever gives Joseph his credit because Joseph had permission out of Deuteronomy 26, verse 1, to stone her. And he, he would have been legal with it. Ain't you glad we don't live under the old covenant? We would be dodging rocks, man, I'm telling you. But he chose not to kill nor abort what God was doing. The problem with today's world is you have many people that are, have the right package but they're married to the wrong people. I'm not, talking about, I'm not talking about like your husband and wife. I'm talking about joined, in covenant, surrounded with people that are trying to abort what God put in you, 
trying to talk you out of believing that you could ever do anything for the Lord, that you could ever make a difference. Even though Joseph, under, he underwent more scrutiny and more shame than Mary, he chose to protect his wife. God is raising up a church in this hour that is not ashamed of the church. They're not ashamed of the bride. They're not ashamed of the moves of the Holy Ghost. They're not ashamed when the Spirit of God begins to move in a service. They say, that's my church. You better believe we speak in tongues. You better believe we lay hands on sick folk. I got people in here right now that have been healed of cancer by the Holy Ghost. I got people in here right now that three years ago were suicidal, but now they're not only alive, they're doing great. We ought to give God praise that there's still power in the church. I I wonder what they were saying that night when they go to the Holiday Inn Express and they said, we got no room for you. They go to the Sheraton. Is that still a thing? Yeah. And the Hilton. And nobody got no room for them. And all of a sudden, the only thing that was left was a little manger. A little manger. You thought, well, God, you should have called ahead and got your son a VIP room. But God chose to have his son, as Chelsea begins to play, born outside of the system. Because they made no room for him in the end, and many people are missing God because they're so concerned about being part of the end crowd. Well, I want to be accepted by people. I don't want people calling me holy roller. I don't want people making fun of me. I don't want, I don't want, I don't want. God said, the end crowd, the ends are full. But I didn't want to be born there anyhow. I wanted to be born outside of the system. I wanted to be born in a broken place, in a dark place, so that that way people would know that I understand people that had rough starts, that I understand people that don't fit in with the system or with the in crowd. From his birth to his death, he was always the outcast, but he had the most results because Jesus wanted to be identified with the broken, with the hurting, with those that had struggles that that the in crowd didn't want to talk about. Jesus said, I got you. I'm born in a manger. And when the baby was born that dark night, they picked that baby up and they said, Emmanuel, God with us. I've come to tell somebody that in this strange season you've been in, I know the enemy's told you, if God was really with you, why are you crying them tears? If God was really with you, why have you been through those battles? If God, God can't be with somebody like you, look at what you struggle with. That's a contradictory message to the message of Christmas. The message of Christmas was peace and goodwill toward men. Emmanuel, God is with us. The same God that's with me on the mountain, he is with me in the valley. The same God that is with me in the light, he is with me in the night. And even though they had to walk by faith and not by sight, there was something in Joseph that said, I can't see nothing, but I got a voice that I'm listening to going to walk me through it. We go see Carlene's pop off from time to time and He keeps his lights off. And there's this one coffee table strategically positioned to break your toe if the light ain't on. I know that because I I read a book about it. And so now when we we enter Carl's house, Carlene's been walking through that house her whole life. She was born there. She understands the darkness. She, She knows where it's at. And if they don't cut the lights on, I have to listen for Carlene's voice. Because if I don't, I'm going to hit that coffee table every time. And I don't feel like speaking in tongues when I stub my toe. And so I'm listening for a voice, and she says, over here, over here, over here. And her voice is what keeps me from tripping up. 
I'm trying to help you right now. When it's dark and the enemy's trying to attack you with depression and fear and you say, I see no way out, listen for his voice. God will talk you through it. We walk by faith and not by sight. I may not be able to see a better day, but it's on the way because God still has something to say. If you believe it, I need you to give God a hand clap of praise about right now. Come on, y'all. God does his best work in the dark. The most powerful things he's done for me have not been behind a pulpit or in a public platform, but it's been in the darkness when there wasn't nobody around than me and God. And I, my sight failed me. I saw no way for it to get better, but I, I learned that believers have to go by vision when you got no sight. You say, well, pastor, what's that mean? Vision is what God put in you. It's what you see in here. Sight is what you see out there. And this is what, right before I left for church, this is what God just dropped in me to tell somebody. Did you know the word vision and provision in the Bible, in the Hebrew, are the same word? Hear me by the Holy Ghost. The vision God gave for your life, everybody say vision, is the same word for provision. Which means if I'm walking in the vision God gave me, he will always give me the provision I need to get it through. So if my provision is dried up, I need to check my vision and say, God, stir it back up again. Let me walk in the thing you called me to do. Everybody stand to your feet all over this place. Lord, I praise you. I praise you that you're here this morning. I praise you for people that on the day after Christmas still honor what Christmas is truly about. Lord, my heart is drawn as your heart is drawn to the people that would ask what they asked in Psalms 137.4. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? Some of you, you say, Pastor, what I've been going through is strange. I'm about ready to ask you to do something that's necessary right now. Because somebody needs to see your hand go up. I'm not calling you up front right now. That's not what I'm doing. But if you've been fighting some strange battles lately, wave at me. I'm raising my hand because I'm one of them. Stuff you don't even understand emotionally, mentally, relationally, strange stuff. Crazy stuff. Stuff you never thought you'd have to fight. You didn't even imagine five years ago you'd be fighting strange battles. God told me to tell you, keep singing. Keep praising him. When I was up on that mountain with Jameson and Loretta, something happened on that mountain in Brushy that I've never had happen before, and I've done hundreds of funerals. They started speaking in tongues as they were burying Jonathan. And I felt something come over me and because I've, I've seen a lot of things happen at a graveside, some bad things happen. I've seen people act crazy at funerals. I have. But you pastored, you know how they can act. If people are going to show themselves, it, it can happen at a funeral. But that was the first time in my life I'd ever stood there and heard the family begin to speak in tongues and felt the Holy Ghost move. Because even in that strange land, on that strange mountain in Brushy, West Virginia, God said, I'm as with you right now as I was when Jonathan was saying, if something ever happens, don't worry about me. I'll be all right. God's got me. I dare you to give God a praise in the strange land. If you've been crying strange tears and going through strange battles, give him praise right now. Father, we praise you. We praise you. All over this sanctuary, we praise you. The strange things going on, God, I thank you. Mm. I'm just wondering if...
said, call unto me, Jeremiah 33 and 3, and I will answer thee. God is saying clearly, I am whatever you need me to be. If you're thirsty, he's that living water. If you're hungry, he is that bread of life. If you're depressed, he is that peace you're so desperately looking for. <clears throat> you have not because you ask not. I'm going to ask you to do something because I know God was speaking specifically to people right now. I plan to not even do an altar call for this service. But the Holy Ghost, I believe, had other, work, other plans. If you're in here and you say, Pastor, that's me. God just spoke to me. I need him to move on specific areas of my life. I'm going to ask you to step out of your seat and just come and kneel at this altar right now. God, I praise you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hey, I'm Pastor Barry Absher. I want to thank you guys for liking and subscribing to our channel. All the feedback that we've received has been such a blessing. If you've not subscribed to our channel, I wanted to take this time to personally ask you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We're really excited about what God is doing here at City on a Hill. And we're also excited about what God is doing in your life and in our lives together. Let's be part of the internet family. Let's link up. Let's join. Continue to watch our videos. Like, subscribe. Let's get on the train together and see what happens. God bless you so much. Bye-bye.